Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series. In this video, we well, in the last video, we got up to this point with the freeze node, um, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the link list and the memory node. Um, the memory node is actually a really good um, feature to have. Um, you can do so much with this. It's really simple um, in terms of like what it, what it's actually doing with the data, but you'll see in a second like all the really really kind of cool delayed effects you can create. Um, and the linked list is actually really handy, and um, it's something that you know you probably use a lot once you start understanding how it works um, and how it kind of iterates. So let's just take a look at the linked list at first. Um, okay, so I've just pulled this in, so you can drag it in from the side here, or we can right-click, go to New Node, Expresso, General, um, and then linked list is there. Um, by default. It should have, I think, it, yeah, all it has is index. Um, on the other side, we've got link uh, and count. So count will export the the count of how many objects are actually linked into this. So this would be empty originally. So we'd select this node. And then what we can do is we can pull in um, a series of objects. So all I've done is select the cube, the cone, and the torus. And I've just pulled it straight into this slot here. Okay, so... If we just go onto the parameters tab, you can see we've got this index value here. Um, and this index value kind of will run from, well, because we've got three objects, um, it will run from, say, one in this will be the second um, object in the list. Um, so zero is the first one, one is the second one, and it kind of it, it works that way. It kind of just starts with zero. Um, and this and these can get like a lot more powerful when you link these in with um, iteration and hierarchy. But just keep this really simple. We're not going to do that at this point. All I've done is I've just linked this into um, the cube. So if you pull it, so you can pull in and just drag one of the cubes um, into the scene, um, or you can create your own placeholder, which is this objects node here. Um, and if you need to update this at any point I mean this will be updated by the link list so at the moment if we click click on the link list and we go to zero okay so we've got zero in this so we know zero is cube one is cone and two is torus so if we go back to the parameters we cycle through these it will change and you can see in the viewport that it's updating now because I've done, all I've done is just pull some text into this, the scene and it's exporting the name of whatever the currently active object is on this. So it's just a way to kind of cycle through um, an index um, number uh, which relates to a list of um, different objects. And, and that's, that's all that kind of does really. Um, so it's quite obvious. So you can see, if I keep going through the list, it will just keep recycling through. Um, each each um, each object, so it goes through one, two, three, and just keeps cycling through all these, um, and that's that. Um, okay, so moving on to the um, the memory node, what we've got here is um, I've got the, I've got a cone, so I've pulled the cone into the expressor window, um, and then we've pulled out position. Um, and you can you can pull out the attributes on these in a couple of different ways. Like one way would be to click on here, and we can go because we're using like all not we're not just using one particular like axis of position. Um, we're using all three. Then I've just selected it this way because it's a lot quicker. So we can go to global position and just select it here. Um, you can also access these if you actually click on the object. So if we select clone, a uh, cone, sorry, go to coordinates. Um, you can select these and then you can click and drag these onto your object. So if we click, drag this on, you can see we'll just pull this attribute straight into uh, here. So that's another quick way um, of doing this, um, and it's a good way as well because if you're not particularly sure about like which axis you, you're moving, you'll see the data moving as you move it in the viewport, um, and then all you need to do is just like 
you know, work out which one's moving, which one's active, um, and select it and drag it straight across. And it's really quick to do it that way. So what does this node actually do? So um, at the moment, if you look at the node, we've got, see this has got a history level on the parameters, and we'll select both of these at the same time. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we've got um, the data site, which is vector, and that's correct because we're pulling out a data vector from position um, and into a position. Um, so both of these are the offset vector, and um, this obviously needs to be set to the correct data type as well, and just so it understands what's happening here. And we've set the um, history depth here to 10, so that's how many states um, uh, that this node will remember. So how many previous frames worth of data will this node remember? History level is the offset, so it's kind of how many frames delay it will be given before it kind of reads that delayed value that delayed data from this memory node so the easiest way is to show how this works is if we we'll just hit play um, and I'll just pull this around and you can see we've got kind of delay going on here and this really cool just on itself just with these two different objects um, you can create some like really really cool effects um, and just remember you can use you can link through any kind of data into this so this can be zip position rotation scale um, any any value um, really you've got all these different um, types um, data types you can change it to so anything that works with these it should work with um, and it's also really really powerful if you're kind of linking this into if so you could link this to a linked list um, and you could iterate through the list and then create offset so you could almost have like move these um, and you'd have something else move it and it continually offset throughout the list um, as it iterates through um, but <clears throat> we're not going to get into iteration yet just because it's kind of it's a bit more complicated than this um, it should be covered in some of these later um, nodes <clears throat> which are around here so now that we've covered both of these, what I'm going to do is just take a quick look at how we can achieve the same um, same kind of thing with Python. So I'm not going to do anything like recreate this kind of memory node because it'll just be like far too complex <coughs> to do at this point. But I am going to recreate like how this linked list works. Um, with a cube, we're going to create user data for this. So at the moment, there's no user data on this. It's just linked into um, straight directly into the node. But we're going to add user data to the um, to the tag, the Python tag itself, um, <clears throat> and pull in the um, objects that way. So let's just go over to the expression editor. Um, select this tag. Just disable this tag, just so it's not affecting anything in the scene. And we'll just take a look at how this is working. So no error, currently no errors on this. Um, we don't need this array. This is this is not actually doing anything. It's just being declared at this point. So we'll just get rid of that, just so it doesn't confuse anything. Um, and we'll take a look at what we're actually doing here. So if I bring up the user data, <coughs> you'll be able to see what's actually happening here and you can see we've got three user data slots <clears throat> so we've got an index we've got a linked list uh, and we've got text so the text is just so we can see what's happening in the viewport um, three objects the objects we want to cycle through and the index is it's just <clears throat> the same kind of like system we had on the previous um, Expresso node so we just recreated that, all that user data onto the tag. And we can reference this here. So if we if we just look at this, we've got um, index, which is this. So index is being um, declared as this variable here. Um, and we all we're doing is put in op, which is an operation on the tag itself and then we've clicked and we've dragged in the user data here okay um, we've done the same thing with the linked list um, and for text so it's all the same kind of thing just pulling these in 
Okay. What we've done here, um, and it's not necessarily like needed, but you can, if you need to get the count, you can get the count of the number of objects, um, just like the count was um, expo exported on the node. Um, we didn't use it, but you know this is the way that you could get that if you wanted to. So again, we've declared a variable here, and we said it's equal to the link list. So that link list is the variable that's been declared just above um, link list, and then we put in dot object. Um, sorry, dot get object count. So that's retrieving the number of objects um, from within the list. Um, so that will be three, which is um, those three objects that are linked in there. So then what we have here is selection. So we're declaring a new variable, which is going to be the active, um, actively selected object. And so and then we've got this command. So we're <coughs> declaring link list, which is the link list. Um, variable that we got which is the user data slot up here and then we're, <clears throat> we're typing in object from index um, doc and then index so index is referencing so this this what this is doing this is pulling out the selected object into a variable so we can then use that variable because it's not actually the linked list is just this is just pointing to all the objects. We're not actually retrieving the selected objects um, from an in index, uh, but we are doing it using this command. So we're pulling out the selected objects and just to work out which object it is we need, um, we've put in index here. So this is the other use the data slot, which, which is declared here, um, just down here. So now we have the currently selected object. All we're doing here is we've put um, a text in here so text is a variable that's been declared up here so we've got text um, and then all I've done is I've clicked on the text and go to object and you've got this slot here um, which is the text so whatever text is typed in, typed in here will um, update to the object and all it does is just click and drag it out um, into here and then we're just saying that's equal to selection which is going to be the currently selected object um, based on the index. So if we click on the tag here, and we just go through this. Okay, let's just enable the tag actually first, it wasn't enabled. So go back to the user data, you can see we're starting at zero, so zero is cube, and then one is cone, and then two is the torus. Um, and with this, so you can see with uh, just a few lines of code, you can really quickly just create the, the same kind of um, setup. So I'm trying to keep this like really kind of simple at the moment. So it's one of the reasons why I don't want to get too complicated with the um, Espresso setups, just so we can keep the code um, quite simple. So I hope you found this um, video useful. Um, thanks for watching. If you have found it useful, um, please like the video and I'll catch you on the next one.